It's the dawn of a new day at Dartmouth. <laughs> After the men's basketball team voted 13 to 2 to become part of a union with the National Labor Relations Board ruling last month the student athletes can be considered employees. Like our manager gets paid and has been getting paid for uh, three years and, and you know none of us have seen a penny. Right before the vote, two Dartmouth players telling NBC's Maura Barrett that the prospect of negotiating salary and health insurance is a game changer. I've got injured here a couple times and had to pay for those like out of pocket. I know a lot of other people on the team have gone through the same thing and that and that can, you know, be a real burden. It's all about athlete empowerment. Darren Heitner teaches courses in sports law and NIL or name, image, and likeness and says unlike the NIL shift, which has allowed athletes like Caleb Williams, Bronny James, and the Cavender twins to make huge sums of money through endorsements, collective bargaining has the potential to lift all athletes. You could have an athlete who earns absolutely no money in NIL, but if that same athlete is considered an employee of his or her university, the university can't get around negotiating a salary for that athlete. In 2015, Northwestern University football players also voted to unionize, only for that status to be overturned on appeal. And Dartmouth College is appealing, saying the school works productively with five unions, but athletic pursuit is part of the educational experience. Classifying these students as employees simply because they play basketball is as unprecedented as it is inaccurate. The AFL-CIO celebrating the vote, posting on X, NCAA athletes make billions in profits for the universities, and they deserve a seat at the table. This is the start of a new chapter in collegiate athletics. Still, the legal process could take months or years to complete. It does make sense for many people to ask, what is the difference, guys, between this effort and what Northwestern University did almost a decade ago? They're both private institutions. However, Northwestern is in the Big Ten filled with public institutions that are beholden to state labor laws. There's a lot of discrepancies there. Dartmouth, however, is in the Ivy League. It's all private institutions falling under federal law. Sports and legal experts say that makes unionization much cleaner in this case. Back to you. An important distinction there, Sam Brock Forest there in Miami. Here's the reality. I mean, between, mm -hmm. you know, the name and likeness uh, issue and now unionization, I mean, college athletics as we know it, it's changing before our eyes. I know, and you think that a lot of those big programs are funding the smaller college sports that are there. You yeah. know, they're making money, but where's the money going? And it's probably going to fund a lot of these other things. So it'll be interesting to see yeah. what happens. Well, it's with a complicated lawsuit. issue. Yeah. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.